You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. You've joined the Dean Team for a new episode. Uh, my name is Mezan Abu Zulof. Uh, thank you for joining us. And with me I have a very special guest uh, from overseas, Sheikh Zayd al-Dakkan. Sheikh, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, Sheikh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And I know that you uh, haven't got much time in the country, um, you know, and it's, so we've got to make the most of it. Um, and we really appreciate you giving your time, inshallah. Uh, jazakallah khair. And I'm, I'm always for you and for the brothers and sisters here. Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Sheikh, one of the things uh, I wanted to speak about is a topic that maybe a lot of us take for granted or maybe underestimate how important it actually is. Um, you know, especially for people that get into the deen, get into the religion, they start practicing and improving on a lot of aspects in their life, Sheikh. And, uh, but unfortunately, there are one or two aspects which we do neglect and we, take, uh, we underestimate how important these actually are. And one of these main ones, and I know you'll agree with me, Sheikh, is the, the issue of parents, the topic of parents. Um, and it's very, you know, and we, we can go into stories and Mashaykh will tell you, you know, brothers that have, you know, become religious and they do all these things, they sacrifice a lot and they, you know, in their ibadah, they're outstanding and they've, you know, they've changed their life completely. But when it comes to the relationship with their parents, either that has not improved and unfortunately in some cases, Sheikh, I've heard stories that they even get worse. Absolutely. It's a very minute. Thank you for choosing this topic. And it's one of the most, I would say, neglected, especially, especially amongst those who are uh, new to the religion and being into so many things. And they, don't, they, they, I don't, I wouldn't say they, they intentionally do that, but I would say forgetfully, or uh, they don't really pay much attention to it. If we, you, you mean, most of us would read this verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us, it's, it's an obligatory on us, to worship Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then next to it, He said, and do good to your parents. This is how important being good and being nice and being excellent to your parents. I mean, some people think, I mean, as you said, the, to be good to and to do your worships, to do everything nice, to do, I mean, to comply with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands in the uh, outer worship, especially the five pillars of Islam. That's it. No. It's before that, I mean, with it, you have to be extremely nice and extremely good to your parents. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran about if their parents uh, are not Muslims, what would, what would the, the child do? Allah said it specifically. He said, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِشَيَّةً فَلَا تُطِعْهُمْ And if they struggle, do jihad, mm. struggle physically, uh, emotionally. emotionally, everything. Yeah. And if they do that, struggle to, to make you uh, associate someone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do shirk. Subhanallah, the worst, the worst, yeah, the worst of it. And wala, subhanallah, it's amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تُطِعُمَا he said, don't obey them. He didn't say, curse them. No. He said, فَلَا تُطِعُمَا Don't obey them. He didn't say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, respond with the same force that they are re- saying to you. No, no, he didn't say that. Be abusive he said, or be, be nah, harsh. He didn't say nah, that. Nah. I mean, look at this. If, 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 you, if one of the brothers or sisters, their parents are not good, and they would ask him to uh, bow to a stone or to do something shirk, what do you think they would do? Even the most uh, good Muslims, what did they do? They maybe would be cursing and damning their parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling us to do that. Look at this point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to be, not to obey. It is just like if your, if your friend asks you, would you join us for dinner? And you say, no thanks. Mm. And this is, it's a similar way. And Although, not beyond that. Not beyond, not beyond that. that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. He said, فَلَا تُطِعُهُمَا وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ And be nice and excellent to them in this dunya. And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just like in our minds that uh, as if there would be some people who would be harsh to their parents and who would be so neglectful to their parents, if they do something to them bad, they would be 
uh, responding to them. And if they ask them to uh, to do something, uh, they would be harsh and, and, and very, especially those who are, for example, they say, this is the sunnah and this is bid'ah, this is... Uh, This is this happens in yeah. all. It's out of jealousy and yeah. out of uh, and being overzealous of, yeah, the, of, of the din as well. Some of them would be harsh in, in answering them, and some of them even to the worst would be neglecting them, and and even some of them, unfortunately, would be leaving them till they change. If the parent going to is not a Muslim, as some of the I mean this, this is go back to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's days. Right. With Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's days, the majority of Sahaba are not Muslims. Okay, before Islam. Yes. And then all of them are what? Are convert. Yeah. They, they are not Muslims. Yes. So we could be thinking that the majority of their parents are not happy with that conversion. Yeah. They are not happy with it. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was telling them at that point of time because, because we'll be doing things over. Uh, one of the Sahaba, his name is Abu Huraira, who narrated most of the hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was angry with his mom one day. She wasn't a Muslim. And then he came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, what happened? He said, inshallah. What Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did? He prayed for her. When Abu Hurairah came back, he saw his mom praying. Converted to Islam. Same thing with many of the Sahaba. Uh, one of them, Mus'ab ibn Umar, for example. His, his mom, when she knew that he's a Muslim, she imprisoned him. House House arrest. House arrest. With, and chained him. Oh, literally so chained literally him. arrested. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And did not allow him to go anywhere. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi did not say, do an uprise and do this and do that. No, he didn't say that because the right of the parents is so much upon us, by the way. And, 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 and the right of the parents is, 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 is when Allah mentioned it up to, uh, after his own worship, it, it means a lot. Maybe some of us, especially the youth, don't really realize that. But those who have children and those who have kids would know how much their kids are very important to them and how much also the kids should be appreciating that. Now, this is, it's really important and it's, it's really one of the uh, issues that uh, unfortunately, unfortunately some, I wouldn't say most, some uh, children are not really doing it the right way, maybe abusing the right and maybe doing it in a very far, uh, ignorant way when they deal with their own parents. Oh. And I wouldn't associate that to the ilm or not ilm. Sometimes it, it's to the, to the persons themselves. We are sometimes, and this is, this is something strange, we are sometimes uh, being very nice to uh, our, our own friends. Yeah, to strangers. Very nice. Yeah. That, to an extent that we just... Um, use the best words and use uh, because we want to have to, to make them love the religion. Yes. And not really the same to our own parents. Your parents are more when you when it comes to words and use usage of words are more than your own beloved those who the girls when they love their own their, their own uh, husbands or the the husbands loving their own wives it's more than that. When you use the words the, the love words especially use it with your own parents first then to your own uh, beloved ones. There are so many stories from the companions and also the, so many stories from the ulama before. One of the ulama used to sit in the lesson and uh, forgot the name. And uh, when he's in the lesson, uh, his mom would call him to go and feed uh, the chicken and <laughs> everything. <laughs> and, and he's he, leading the halakha. He's, he's leading, leading the, the halakha. He's a alim. One of his students said, I will do it. He said, no, no, no. I will do it. It's, it's not your mom, it's my mom. And she, he would go for a while and do everything what she asked for and then stay with her and then come back to the halaqa. And he was, he was a alim. He could have someone to, to, to help him or someone to do it. He, he, because he knew the right of his parents is, is so much so that it's, it's almost as if he, if he makes them angry, Allah will get angry at him. And if they are pleased, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them. It's, it's really very, very uh, dangerous, and it's good. And thank you for, for raising the topic, because um, especially with the Shabab, MashaAllah, the youth are so enthusiastic to be in the religion. And when they learn something, uh, that this is good to do in religion, and this is nice, the first thing they would apply on, their own parents. Yeah. 
the first thing that they will want to force on their own parents. Don't do that. If they are doing the obligatory things, or even not doing the obligatory, obligatory things, you have to be very nice to them, and even in commanding them and doing the right thing to them. Uh, it's, it's really very important, extremely important, to show how much ilm and how much religion you have if you are nice to your parents. This is, it's, it's, it's like a scale. If you see someone who's so nice and so excellent to their own parents, that means this person has got knowledge and has got ilm and is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know in the community here in Australia, one of my friends, he's a, doc- a doctor, a physician. He's with his parents. He's, he's, he's got his own father now alive. His mother died. And uh, I, 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 sometimes I talk to him and I said, we want to. He said, no, I can't go because my father is here and he needs me. He's a physician. He could have three, five people taking care of his yeah. own father. Yeah. But he is taking, he said, no, I feel so much um, uh, in love with doing it, with taking care of my own parent, my own father. Uh, sometimes uh, t- changing for them, taking from A to Z, feeding them, etc. Everything. And he's not disgusted to do that. He said, I'd love to do that. Because what they did to us in the beginning... I mean, think of it that way. Who's, who's going to change your diaper and who's going to take care of that? Your mom would be doing that without being disgusted. And staying up all night when you're yeah, Staying up all night and everything. Your mom was doing that without asking you anything. And then it's now the return that we should be doing for them in an extreme way. And this is, and by the way, those who are doing it for them, it's just like they're doing ibadah and worship and so on and everything. Because they are doing something good for their own parents. Sheikh, yeah. You know, one of the one of the um, hadith that really um, means a lot to me and that really strikes a chord with me is the one, uh, Sheikh. I know if I get you to to remind us, the one where the where Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, anfu. That's right. That the, the the it's a very amazing hadith. That if your parents are there and you don't really get uh, the best of them serving them, helping them, and then they die. Then what happened? This person's door to paradise is locked. If he wasn't doing good to, to his own parents, that if the, the person with his parents and was not able to go through them to paradise, in other words, to do an, an extremely nice and good to them, to make him, uh, to make them uh, lead him to paradise, because they are mentioned in another hadith that they are the gates, the two gates of paradise. Oh, yeah. If one died, then that means one door is closed. If another died, one another one is closed. This is, it's very very important. That so on this particular one, Sheikh, is the the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "What's the word, Sheikh? Raghima, which means really, literally translated, means may his nose be rubbed in That's the dirt. That's right. Yeah, in the dirt. Be, if, which if, means is a tra- is it's a expression of may this person be humiliated, right? If, if not, if if and the companions were amazed. That's Why? Right. Who's this person, Ya Rasulullah? Because the first thing they thought was. I don't want to be one of these That's people. That's right. It's right. Exactly. So they said, "Who is this person?" And amongst the three that he mentioned, he said the one that he's he sees one or both of his parents, or he's, he is with them. That's right. And because of them, he does not enter paradise. Meaning right. that he didn't fulfill their rights. That's he was right. not good to them. He was not a good, you know, a good child, and didn't fulfill That's the right. rights and, and make right. them happy and those kinds of things. And, and sometimes we understand it also in a very uh, different way. We think that dealing with our parents is only to to do the duties. Give them some money, give them, that's if they it. want to go somewhere, just take them there and okay. now, do the bare minimum. That's it. Yeah. Just do the bare minimum of our duties to them. Now, move it to another way. If someone, this is an example, if someone's got, um, or in love with someone, what do we think that this person should do? Now, if, he or she is in love with that person. They would do what they think is good for them. Not the duties, by the way. Mm. If it's the duties, then it's not love. They think way beyond uh, It's a duties. way beyond. Yeah. That's why 
uh, the words, the uh, the gifts, the um, the roses, uh, everything. The sweet words. The sweet words, even the sweets, the physical sweets <laughs> that we'll be bringing to them. This is to make them feel happy and closer to them. This is between two lovers. Yes. And 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 when we deal with our parents, it should be more than that. Because we should be also thinking what they would think it's good for them. Not if they ask, because the majority of parents would not ask their children yeah. uh, to do something extra. They would ask the minimum. Yes. And this is what uh, what, what most of the uh, of our uh, parents would do. They would ask just the minimum. They wouldn't really exceed to the maximum. Because they, want, because they don't want to be a burden on their children. That's right. It is right. But we are really a burden on them. Yeah. Because, right. some, I mean, I, I remember that um, one day... Uh, one of the uh, one of my children, his mom asked him to do something, and he he did it, and then he did something, and he did it, and then the second time uh, she asked me, my wife, can you do it? Just go and bring something. I said, why don't you ask your child? She <laughs> said, no, I don't want him because I asked him two times. I said, she said he, she was actually so soft, she and she doesn't want him. him. She built bad for him, <laughs> and he's really so uh, a little bit angry because two times. Now, what, what should he do? And, and subhanAllah, we, we, our parents are so much to us than our own selves. i give you an example. It was said that uh, an old man, uh, his son was, uh, was repairing the house, and he was on top of the house yeah. repairing, and it was very, very uh, sunny hot. and yeah. hot. And the, uh, the man said to his son, Please uh, cover yourself with something, because it's hot. He said, no, no, I'm, I'm okay. He said, please. The father is telling his son. He said, no, no, I'm okay. What happened? The father brought the grand, the grandson of, of, of his son, who was on top, and then put him on, on, uh, uh, under the heat of the sun. And then the, 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 the son said, please, dad, take my child outside. The son and I said, no. <laughs> He said, please. He said, what do you feel for your child? I feel for you. Allah, so if you feel uh, so much to him that he is now on the sun, I feel the same thing. You are burning my heart. So you cover yourself. I will take your son outside. <laughs> if you don't, I won't. And this is, it's tr- really, it is well, true. Very true it is very true. The, 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 the parents are so much into their own children. They love them, they care about them more than what we think. They'll sacrifice anything. They will sacrifice them. anything. And if it comes, by the way, to death, they will die for their own parents, so their own right. children. I mean, it's just like if you see, uh, when we see, uh, we saw lots of pictures, especially during those uh, disasters and also those what's happening in the world. We see the, the, the lady uh, hugging her child. And, and trying, buried underneath rubble. Yeah, and trying to, pr- to be protective of the child. Not making the child protect her. Yeah. She's protecting the child and holding tight the child. So any if there is anything to happen, any harm to happen, it will happen to her, not the child. It's it's really uh, amazing that how would our parents, if we deal with them, I would say, with about ten percent of what they think and deal with us, we'll be very fine. Allah yeah. Allah. Sheikh, there's a story, and I forgot which Sahaba this was, um, or which pious predecessor when they were in Mecca and doing. Tawaf, and there was a, a man carrying his mother, mm. yeah, yeah, and uh, and he 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 was making tawaf. When you know we for those that you have that have been there, mm. you know it's going around the Kaaba seven times. Um, even on your own, sometimes there's a little bit of a struggle. It's very hard, know, yeah, um, with uh, the amount of people and things like that. So um, so this man came up to this Sahaba. Uh, I think it was Ibn Umar for some reason. Yeah, but Ibn Umar, Abdullah Ibn Umar. Subhanallah, yeah. and he's and he and he sort of was. I think. Almost pleased with himself. Yeah, he thought that he's doing a lot. Yeah, he thought he said, mom, you know, I've yeah. done something pretty big. So yeah. he asked uh, uh, Abdullah have, bin Umar, have, have I, I have fulfilled? I, yeah, yeah. And then have I fulfilled my mother's rights? Mm. You know, he's thinking, okay, now I can. I know she's done everything for me, and I know I owe her a big debt. And uh, but surely by this act, mm, I've, I uh, I've repaid doing, my debt. Yeah, now. everything. Yeah. And what did Umar say? Uh, Ibn Umar say to her, Sheikh? He said, to not him. even talqa when he when she was in labor. Not even one one contraction. One contraction, not the contraction oh, itself. Okay, yeah. It's actually the sound. The sound, okay. Yeah, it's not. So when you have the contraction during labor, it's very hard. Yes. 
it's very hard, but the sound that they are... The, 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 like the, the moaning the, of the, the, the moaning of the pain. And yeah. the, the pain, this is not even one of it. So you have not fulfilled even, even an equivalent one, of one moan one of, of a contraction. One man came to Muhammad so and sad. he said, uh, how could I repay my, my, my own father or mother? He said, it could be, just supposedly, that if you find them slaves and then you free them. Because, you know, it's life. It's similar to they are the cause of your being here. Mm. Now, if you are the cause of their other being, in other words, freeing them, yeah. then you could be, in a way, uh, repaying the debt, which is not really easy. It's not really easy. Because uh, they, they are so much to their, to their own uh, children. Uh, a man, and this is how to please your, 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 your parent. Part of it. A man was not really pleasing uh, his own mom. And um, he was about to die during the days of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A well-known story. And uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's companion came to him running and say, we wanted this man to say, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. I couldn't say it. So he just give the shahada before give the dying. Shahada and he's, and he, he's, he's struggling to say it. He's tr- he didn't. He didn't say it. Uh, the, the, the sahaba said, say it. He said, I can't. They asked repeatedly, he said, I can't. He could talk anything, say anything, but not. And you know, when, when, as the hadith said, if your last words, then you will be, inshallah, in paradise. So Muhammad Sassam straight away said to the Sahabi, he said, uh, doesn't this uh, man uh, have a mother or a father? He said, yeah, yeah. His mother is still alive. He said, go and ask his mother. If she's pleased with him or not. They, uh, they went and asked the mother. She said, no, I'm not pleased with him. Allah. The pleasedness of that mother, the pleasure of that mother, was because he wasn't doing it the right way, stopped him from saying, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. It's very dangerous, by the way. Stopped him from going to take the keys and, and, and when, when saying it, inshallah, going to paradise. Stopped him from that. And then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, amazingly, he did a very excellent and, and, and a very wise thing. Wise thing. He asked the Sahaba to gather wood. And a pile of wood, a very huge pile of wood. And uh, he told them to let the fire, that wood. His mom came just to see, why would you do that? Yeah. He said, no, we'll just uh, burn this child because before he's burnt in, in, in hell fire. He said, who? He said, the one, your child. Because she's not pleased with him. And being pleased, it's not just like, yeah, I'm pleased with you. And it has you to say, be from the heart. It has to be from the heart. It's not, it is just like if someone is forgiving you, uh, and you say, yeah, I forgive you. And you know that, he's not forgiving you. He just said it to yeah, get, he just to said get it. rid of you. If it's something related to this dunya, for example, money or something, yeah, yes. that's okay. Because that needs to be, we just, uh, we just judge by the appearance. Yes. If... If I take money from you, you and take it say, from the face value. If you've yeah, been forgiven, you're forgiven. Yeah, at face value, if it's in this dunya. Yeah. But if it's something that I will be judging in the hereafter, it should be from the heart. Then the mother said, no, I'm pleased with him. Allah. Please don't burn him. Then Muhammad Sallallahu said to the Sahaba, go and see if he's saying the shahada or not. He did say the shahada and he died. It's very dangerous, by the way, when we when when it when we think of pleasing our own parents. So he was very close, Sheikh, to even very leaving this world. That. Yeah, that's in right. In the worst of states. That's right. Subhanallah. And that's why, by the way, it's now, now we move to something uh, more. Imp- I mean, it's not more important, but this is a consequence of of, of the of our own uh, dealing with our own parents and being nice to them. It doesn't really, it's not for this life, for, for the hereafter only. If you are dealing nice with your own parents, it could open for you the doors of what? Jannah. Paradise. Paradise. That's in the hereafter. How about, how about here? What could open for you? What could be open for you in this life and also in, uh, in our own daily life? What could... Be open for you. Oh, I would personally say <coughs> happiness, for instance. Yeah, happiness. Happy, happy, happy Most life. people would be saying about happiness. What did it? What would it would be then for happiness that leads to happiness? Subhanallah. Yeah. Mostly money. Money. Okay. Yes. And success in this life and yeah. being su- successful uh, 
businessman or woman, a man, uh, I know this man. I mean, he's a very rich person in, in, in Arabia, in Saudi Arabia. They asked him after, uh, they used to have talks for those rich people to give their own experiences mm. of business yes. and uh, strategies and everything, everything. Uh, and everyone's how, coming to see yeah, how, to how see the gonna, strategies how and, <laughs> and, and, and to benefit from the strategies of this person. At the end of the of the session, they asked him, what do you think? If we ask you one thing that makes you successful in life. And started. they're all getting their papers ready, of course. ready to and write down said, the, the secret. He said, I, I don't think anything else in my mind now that is leading me to success except being nice and good to my parent and to my relatives. And this is true because Muhammad Sallallahu said it. من أحب أن ينسى له في رزقه أن ينسى له في أجله ويبسط له في رزقه فليصير رحيما. And those who would love to have their their, their life expanded and their 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 wealth is also expanded, they should be nice and good to their relatives. Of course, starting with the parents. Yes, so it's very very important to know that the key to this life and to success in this life is dealing with parents. Allah. And if you, if you are, if you are, some, but I mean, uh, amazingly, sometimes, I mean, it's in a very just opposing, uh, in, in a very opposite way that we will be uh, seeing some people who are successful but not very nice to their parents. And we not, see this. Yeah. We and see not this. even happy in their own life, and regardless even, of how yeah. much they have. And we could see this, but we, how could that be explained? Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us chances and will give us some Something to really think and consider. Give you some more wealth and some more uh, success in your life. Even if this person is not really dealing good with their parents. But at the end of the day, of the day this child will not be as pleasant as if he or she was nice and good to their parents. That wealth will not be as happiness and leading them to happiness as it should be. Because Muhammad Sallallahu words are true and genuine. Now, um, that's why if, if, if those who are nice and good and great to their parents and to their relatives, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala opens the doors of rizq for them. And the doors of rizq are not only strategies and planning and everything. No, it's also success. If you have 10,000 and I have 10,000. You've got your own projects and I have my own projects. We plan things very good and just do them as perfect as we can. But maybe you could be successful and doubling your amount and I could be losing money. Mm. Because this is at the end of the day, it's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. We do our best in planning, yes, of course. But also it's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more importantly, every now and then we do dua. And that leads me to say something to the brothers and sisters and to, spur- and to whisper in their ears. Don't ever leave your parents without asking them to make dua for you. Every now and then, please, my dad, my mom, make dua for me. And by the way, it is accepted, as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the dua of the, the parents and their children is accepted, either for or against. If it's for them, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala inshallah will accept it. If it's against them, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala also is accepting it. And when it happened at one incident, it is reported uh, in many areas where the parents will be angry. And that's why Muhammad Sallallahu said, if you're angry with your own child, don't make dua on them. Allah. Don't do it. That's why we are not allowed to make them angry because if they make dua against us, we could be, we could be in trouble for, our, for the whole life. There were incidents and examples and stories of people who... Who, 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 whom their parents did dua against them, did dua on them, and then they got into so much troubles because of the dua of their own parents. That's why for the parents and for the children, all the time make dua for, not against, for them to be successful and to be good and, uh, and nice in life. Uh, one example and one, one uh, of the things that I do remember, one was very nice and kind to his mom. And always his mom say, Ya Allah, open the doors of uh, wealth for him. 
I mean, every now and then. But he doesn't know. He, was, he wasn't that intelligent. And by the way, being wealthy is not intelligent. Hmm. And this is, we know this. Hmm. We know the, the most intelligent persons are hired by maybe dumb people. But they, 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 have, they, they are successful businesswomen. Yeah. It's, not, it's not about hmm. intelligence. So this person was just very normal. Ordinary person. Ordinary person. <laughs> the story was, uh, I was told by this story, and he, the, 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 this person is just very normal. And he went with an intelligent person. That intelligent person seems to be excellent and doing everything right. But this, the woman, the, his mother used always to say to him, Oh, Allah opens the door for him. Then one day, subhanAllah al he was selling and buying. And one man came to him and he said to him, Well, all of what you sell and buy will take it from you. A contract, a government contract. Hmm. And then he said, so what does it mean? He doesn't know. He said, no, we'll take it from you. How much do you want profit? He said, he was exaggerating. He said, I want 100%. He said, no, 200%. <laughs> we'll give it to you. And from that on, this person is now, mashallah, very rich. Somehow. Because of, you can't explain it. Sorry? In this worldly events, you can't explain it except for the prayers and the uh, dua, of the, dua of the parents. So using logic, lo- using, uh, you know, your own what you can uh, observe from this case, mm. you, you can't put it down to anything. You, the, he was not um, extraordinarily inter- intelligent. Yeah. He wasn't a great businessman that stands mm. out. He wasn't really, didn't have like a 50-year plan and a strategy to mm. say, I'm going to go from A to B and this is how I'm going to make my wealth. That's right. The only thing that really stands out is, is the du'a. From the du'a. Some Some people would say it's luck, okay, but it's not your luck. In Islam, we don't, yeah. Then, it, yeah. it could be, but that, how could that be led to? It's part of the of, course. Dra, of that. Subhanallah. And sometimes we, we, we feel it and, and we touch it in our own lives that we are successful in one thing that we never we, we never even thought about it. Or maybe, maybe sometimes you are um, uh, uh, you are saved from danger, but you don't know how. Yeah. Because of the draft your own parents. And this happens to most of us in accidents, in whatever or sometimes while you are going and coming, and your parents may ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, for your travel to be safe, and you don't, sometimes Allah paves the way for you in a very marvelous way, and you never think. Once I read um, a story, and I, I think it was Zain al Abidin, and he, he, it was obviously known that he loved his family, he loved his parents, and particularly his mother, he loved so much. And he, and everyone knew this, but people were amazed to see that when he used to eat with her, Mm. He used to not eat, like he used to sit with her but not eat from the same plate as her. Mm. So they were wondering, I can imagine they were wondering why does he do this? Is he, you know, is he maybe proud or Mm. maybe he doesn't, for some reason, there's a reason why he's not eating from the same plate. So they actually asked him and the response he gave was amazing. He said that I am scared that when I sit with my mother and she's eating from the plate, I'm scared to touch anything on that plate that in case she wants it. She wanted that exact morsel of food that I that I, I to took. Take. She had her eyes on that morsel of food that I took. Look at this um, yeah. it's consciousness. A, it's a very sensible and also consciousness that this... Uh, and, and there are so many also examples of such stories that it's not only... As, as we talk about love, it's you don't you want to make... Uh, your loved, be pleased with everything. You want them to eat from the food that you love to eat, yeah. so you make them eat before you. Even if you have to sacrifice. Uh, even if you have to, and then you eat it for, uh, after them. Or even, uh, you, you, you just want them to be pleased with everything you do, the words, the actions, everything. It is so important to, to, to put in our minds that, um, that making our parents happy and making our parents be pleased with us is an essential part of our own religion. It is next to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's part of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your parent said to you, don't fast, you don't obey them. But if they say to you, don't fast Monday and Thursday, then do your best to convince them or just Obey them. If you're, you have to listen to them. Maybe they are seeing something you don't know. If they, if your parents, for example, ask you 
to not to pray, you don't listen to them. But, but again, as you mentioned before, don't listen to them, but in a, in in a, a very, way that befits and there's of yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Of course, it should be. If they ask you, for example, irtikaf is sunnah. But obeying your parent is a must. If your parents, especially those who are living with their parents, if their parents told them, don't go, you don't go. And if your intention is to do itikaf, Allah will reward you for itikaf, even if you don't do it. So it's a win-win, Sheikh. Yeah, you, it's you a win-win situation. You get, even if you're, and if you're not, pleasing your parents. Even if you're not doing it. SubhanAllah. Yeah, this is, it is something amazing that when you are obeying them and observing that sense that if you obey them, you're actually doing a worship. SubhanAllah. You know, we're talking about itikaf, mm. Sheikh. If we go to the hadith of Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the man came to him and said, I pledge my allegiance to you mm. to follow you into jihad. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're talking about jihad now. We're not talking about itikaf. We're talking, yeah, you know, that's and, amazing. And and what did he? What did the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell The first, jihad, the first jihad would be where? Subhanallah. People when they think about jihad, they think of swords, guns, and battleships and everything. But the first one is to the jihad. With the, he he asked him by the way. Yeah. He said, "Do you have a mother? One of your parents. He, you have? Do you have your parents?" He said, "Yeah, my mother is there." He said, "Fafihima fajahid." Do jihad on them. Because some people, unfortunately, when they want, even by the way, even Meaning if going look after them, by the way, that's right? right. Yeah. You have to take care of them and look after them. This is jihad. It's not, when, when, when we talk about jihad, usually we think about uh, the, battlefield. the battlefield. No. Jihad this is, is one so type. Many. This is one type. Yeah. It is one single type, but it's not the only type. It's one single type. But it's not the only time. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at that time, Muhammad needs men. Think about it this way. He needs men to be with him. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam needs people to go and fight with him. Muhammad is in need of making the numbers of his own companions in the battlefield to be larger, more, yeah. larger and larger. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, do you have? He said, yes. He said, well, this is your jihad. Go look after them. This is your jihad and go look after them. He didn't ask him, come and accompany with us. Go with us. No. He said to him, do that. And that's why it is very important to understand this uh, sensible topic of, of, of jihad and doing jihad, etc. It's not as always as my people might think of just going somewhere and somehow. No. You obey them and be with them this is part of jihad, and more important than even the battlefield, and going to the battlefield. Subhanallah. Yeah. Shaykh, I think if we could sit here for another few yeah. days, uh, we would not really do the, um, the topic of you know, the parents and the rights of the parents and our dutifulness towards our parents. We wouldn't do it any justice, subhanAllah. Mm-hmm. Um, but thank you very much, Shaykh, for, for um, offering your time to sit with us. Well, uh, we've benefited greatly from it. Exactly. And uh, inshallah, we get to have you uh, you know, back with us uh, more often, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair and thank you, brother. And uh, I hope that what I said is, uh, if it's right, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala word it for it. And if it's wrong, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for it. Jazakallah khair and thank you. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. You've been listening to the Dean team. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfirka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.